Hi all, my name is Daria Botinova and I represent uh, vapetesting.com company. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for coming to welcome you at the World Vape Show and to uh, thank all those people who are engaged in organization of this amazing happening. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you about uh, the latest updates uh, in the regulatory basis on heavy metals regulation contained in electronic devices in general and uh, their parts in particular across the European Union with a specific focus on toxicological contents testing as well as uh, permissible concentration levels. Before getting to the main idea, uh, it is necessary to stress that potential heavy metals uh, constituents may refer to uh, as uh, electronic device in general, uh, which is like vaping hardware compounds into aerosol from the vaporization process, as well to the illiquid uh, contained in them. That is, illiquid contamination by one of composition elements or during mixing and also leachable contamination in illiquid, uh, which is meant by leachables from components uh, as heaters, wick, pot shells, etc., to illiquid. Uh, speaking about the European Union, uh, the current legislation requires provision of ingredients, uh, emissions and toxicological data for vaping products uh, six months prior to the um, market submission through the EU as uh, EG uh, or uh, XML creator tool. The regulatory bodies CEN, BSI and FNOR ensure normative requirements regarding heavy metals like arsenium, cadmium, mercury, lead, uh, antimony, chromium, etc. in vaping products in Europe. Uh, in correspondence with uh, the mentioned agencies, control of heavy metals in batteries and accumulators is limited to mercury, lead and cadmium. The test methods used should be included with the submission uh, made to a recognized approval standard when available. Uh, and here is where we come to uh, EU regulations of electronic cigarettes and illiquids. Uh, the Tobacco Product Directive is the document that has got a specific focus on uh, restricted substances and chemical safety, battery requirements and vaping product standards, uh, which are uh, more specifically described in particular directives, annexes and amendments uh, to the documents which are provided on the slide. All tobacco-related products under the directive are um, subject to the following like provisions, procedures which are to be followed. Uh, the first one is pre-market notification. Manufacturers must notify their intention to place uh, any refillable container or uh, any e-cigarette on the market at least uh, six months before the intended marketing date. And uh, it also must contain a list of ingredients, concentrations uh, and toxicological risk assessment then it will be results of emission testing, product descriptions and a declaration of manufacturer's responsibility. Uh, the final point is uh, annual submissions on sales data and reporting of any consumer preferences uh, studies conducted must also be made. Uh, then we come to product restrictions. Uh, some specific uh, restrictions are to be applied to the products, including uh, in nicotine concentration of uh, 20 milligrams per milliliter, volumetric limits of uh, uh, 2 milliliters on cartridges and 10, 10 milliliters on refillable containers, then uh, prohibition of certain ingredients such as uh, CMR, classified substances, vitamins and stimulants. Uh, number three is advertising restrictions. All cross-border advertising is banned. Member states may choose uh, to prohibit non-border, uh, non-cross-border advertising such as out of home, direct mail and cinema. And the final point is vigilance. Producers are required to maintain a system that records 
adverse events caused by their products. Uh, the given slide provides uh, the evolution of the development of standards for electronic cigarettes in the European Union. Particular guidance regulating products testing are further to be developed into standards. Uh, here you can see the regulatory changes uh, of uh, vaping products like e-cigarettes, e-shisha, e-liquids throughout 2015-2021, uh, which have defined uh, requirements and test methods for the given products, as well as their manufacturing, labeling, import, packing, etc. Uh, here we come to standards regulating heavy metals contamination in e-cigarettes, uh, in the European Union. <coughs> uh, uh, there are two parts, in fact, of the document e uh, XPD by FNOR, uh, which describe uh, requirements and test methods for illiquids and emissions, and also the directive uh, restricting the usage of hazardous substances in electronic and electrical equipment. Uh, and finally, the main uh, upcoming document to be issued in the nearest future is ISO AWI to provide analytical methods for measuring metals in evaporator products emissions. Uh, so the next is where we come to the issue of uh, legal requirements to uh, heavy metals contamination in e-liquids. The EU regulations provide uh, defined limits for heavy metals in e-liquids and uh, flavorings. The Council Directive defines the limits for uh, heavy metals contamination in flavorings, which are as follows. You can see it in the graph. Uh, it is 10 mg per kilogram for lead, 3 mg for arsenic, 1 mg for cadmium and mercury. Uh, also, this um, document uh, defines technically unavoidable trace levels limits for heavy metals in e-liquid, and uh, they are defined as, uh, as well at 10 mg for lead, uh, 5 mg for antimony, 3 mg for arsenic, and 1 mg for cadmium and uh, mercury. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, e-vapor emission regulation and uh, corresponding requirements. Uh, the limits for metals and inorganic substances in emissions from e-cigarette measured in uh, milligrams per 200 puffs, and uh, they are as shown uh, in the graph. Uh, they are 20 for antimony, 5 for nickel and lead, 3 for chromium, and 2 for arsenic and cadmium. Uh, all these uh, all this list of metals is uh, um, shown in the Annex A6 as uh, the ones that are to be measured in uh, emissions during use and their indicative target values. Uh, the method for uh, measuring metals and other non-metal elements in the emissions is primarily ICP OES. The next is the next is this particular document, the draft of the ISO AWI, Vapor Products Analytical Method to Measure Metals of e vapor Product Emissions. Uh, this document is to become a standard specifying methods for determination of the selected materials, uh, metals, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, they are provided in the slide, which are shown for metals in e vapor product emissions and other metal of potential uh, significance as contaminants of the vapor products. The next we come to is uh, requirements defining the limits of heavy metals in batteries, which are as follows. Um, just a second. The slide shows uh, all the limits for batteries uh, and accumulators by weight, uh, which are shown in uh, percent. They are set for mercury, cadmium, and uh, lead, according to the directive. The following two slides you observe uh, show a complete list of the metal limits for vaping products in the European Union. 
Uh, in fact, there are three common standards operating in the moment. One more is to be developed uh, shortly. Here is the continuation of summary table of, on heavy metal limits. Uh, all of these uh, documents uh, regulate heavy metals contaminated in illiquid flavorings and illiquid itself, uh, its components, emissions and leachables. And uh, thus we shortly have come to making conclusions. Uh, to, uh, so to say, the main risk that uh, vaping is currently facing are regulation updates and growing government de demand on vaping products uh, as a way to reduce harm for smokers, which is uh, like the main goal of everything. And to gain a competitive advantage through regulation system and processes, it is uh, strongly recommended to, first of all, participate in regulatory science programs. It means that uh, scientific research and uh, data become a useful resource for authorities. Uh, they can influence legislative uh, debate and help establish accredited standards. With regard to uh, ensure uh, enhanced product safety, a number of studies can be carried out, such as uh, pharmacokinetics uh, trials, cytotoxicity studies, research and contact content of products emissions or, or biomarket reduction, etc. Uh, the next uh, recommendation is to become involved in standards, uh, uh, in the process of setting standards. Any business can be involved in this process uh, through national standard boards as application could be lodged in the country where the company is active or has active businesses. Um, uh, participation in the work of uh, such groups allows you to uh, defend the most appro appropriate uh, standards and regulatory requirements for products quality. Uh, the next is to foresee the standard development. An emerging regulatory area with tougher requirements can be uh, predicted to some extent by focusing on standards uh, of medical device, uh, devices or combustible cigarettes. For example, uh, the EU single-use plastic regulation does not currently apply to e-cigarettes, but it is likely to change in the uh, following several years. And the last recommendation is immediate preparation for future standard requirements. Uh, when planning the development of a new uh, device or component, uh, it is needed to consider all the requirements of the not yet approved. For example, it, it will be ISO AWI standard. Uh, it means to prepare all needed testing equipment and uh, supply chain connections to be uh, one step ahead. Uh, there is a very le uh, low risk that uh, draft requirements of uh, ISO AWI standard will be reduced. And here is where I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm open for your questions. And also, if you have any, you can join uh, our place, U21. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daria, for your presentation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maria, for uh, leading this uh, session. And thanks, Patricia, for joining virtually. Uh, thanks uh, for the audience also for attending this session. Do you have any questions? Uh, we have our uh, presenters here to answer you, please. I, I want to ask you about ISO AWI standard. Please tell me uh, in which stage of legislation process uh, this standard is now. Uh, thank you for your question. You mean the current status of this uh, document? The current, the current, yes, the current state of the document. Uh, well, it is hard to say when it comes to uh, documents which are under development, but uh, analyzing uh, the general list of uh, standards and uh, directives on the um, e-cigarettes and uh, heavy metals uh, contamination in them, uh, I can say that uh, it will take up to five years 
at least, because uh, for now the document ISO uh, AWI is um, uh, at the stage of uh, preparation and uh, it's uh, um, okay to, to, to be developed from a draft to a uh, operating document it has to reach uh, 95 points right and for now it is uh, rated 25 thus it means it's only under development but we are um, considering and taking into uh, account all the uh, pr procedures all the stages of this document and we'll try to check up with it thanks Okay, thank you.